bring in right now special correspondent for Vanity Fair, the host of Fast Politics podcast, Molly John Fast, also editor at large for Newsweek, Tom Rogers. Both are writing about Mike Johnson's ascension to House Another Speaker. Another good one. Yeah, uh, but, but let, let, really quickly, though, Molly, let's just talk about what we've seen, what Coverville's doing in the Senate and what the Republicans are doing in the House, endangering uh, Israelis, endangering Jews right now. They, they, they held up funding Israel for three weeks. Now they're, they're, they're playing a game saying, unless you allow billionaires to cheat on their taxes, we're not going to support Jews. And same thing with Ukraine. They're not, they're not even talking about Ukraine. They are Vladimir Putin's best friend right now. Yeah, well, they don't want to fund any of this, and they don't ultimately want to fund the government. Uh, it's an incredible bit of sorcery what's happening right now in the House of Representatives. You have Mike Johnson, who was a backbencher until last week, elevated to speaker. Mm -hmm. He had never met Mitch McConnell. By the way, no vetting at all. Yeah. There are a lot of Republicans that are going... We don't know what's going to come out about this guy. We're, you know, very, very concerned. What's come out in the last four days is unbelievable stuff. I mean, his wife is involved in, you know, in uh, LGBTQ therapies. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's just unbelievable. So your latest piece for Vanity Fair, Molly, is entitled Welcome to Maga Mike's House. And in it, you write in part, quote, after more than three weeks of abject chaos, Republicans finally united behind relative newcomer Mike Johnson. It was like so many things done in this Trumpified Republican Party, sloppy and strange and without much forethought. Instead of picking a veteran House member who knew everyone in the caucus and was able to appeal to their particular political needs when it comes to whipping votes, Republicans landed on someone who was so unknown that few disliked him. Perhaps MAGA jo Mike Johnson's biggest problem will end up being his enormous catalog of comments showcasing his wildly out of the mainstream religious views. Johnson is also staunchly anti-LGBTQ plus rights. He called being gay a dangerous lifestyle and inherently unnatural. Also said it could lead to the collapse of the Republic. Interesting. As Johnson's extremist views surface, the clock is ticking toward another shutdown with the government only funded until November 17th, along <laughs> with other pressing matters. Did I mention Johnson still hasn't changed the one person motion to vacate? His speakership could be even shorter than McCarthy's. But who knows at the rate he's going? Yeah. He's appealing to these. Well, and, 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 and on on. The immortal words of Melissa Manchester, even the simple things become rough. Uh, and, and in this case, funding for Israel should be the easiest thing. If he can't figure out how to fund Israel and can't figure out how to fund uh, Ukraine's efforts to push back a Russian invasion, how's he going to figure out how to fund the government? Well, and I, I don't think he wants to, right? The idea of doing paid f pay fors for emergency aid is unprecedented. And I think there's a reason for that, right? He hopes that he can put uh, aid versus the government and, you know, make Democrat, put Democrats in a tough position. But he real he doesn't realize he doesn't have his party support. I mean, Mitch yeah. McConnell wants to do this aid. And it'll be interesting to see this show. Chairman Mike McCall wants to do this aid. Yeah. A lot of Republicans want to do this aid. The majority of Republicans want to do this aid. That's the key word, the majority. The, majority. the minority is, is holding it up. So, Tom, uh, this is a guy in Mike Johnson, Congressman Speaker Mike Johnson, who is smoother than, say, a Jim Jordan. Uh, he has sort of that calm wow. Southern demeanor. But as Molly writes, when you go down and read through his views and his policy positions, we could add in also that he was a leader from the constitutional, he thought, side of overturning the 2020 election. So he is as MAGA as it gets. Um, but you say perhaps the elevation of Mike Johnson to the speakership could have some political benefits to the White House. Yes, absolutely. I think uh, in, inside all this, there's a real gift to 
President Biden. A lot has been made of the fact that uh, he's an election denier. Uh, we have a poster boy for election denialism in Donald Trump. What the Democrats need is a poster boy for a national abortion ban. And Mike Johnson is just that. Uh, he has a deep ideological view of banning abortion nationally. Uh, it is the one issue that really seems that uh, President Biden is still winning on in every poll. Economy, mm. uh, immigration, crime, obviously not going well in terms of polling. No. But the abortion issue is one the Democrats own, and it's the most important issue for the most important constituency for the upcoming election. Well, you know, and Tom, it's funny. Uh, Donald Trump is trying to backtrack, saying, oh, I'm going to be everybody's friend on this. Donald Trump's only problem is the Democrats have him on tape bragging time and time again. I'm the one who killed Roe v. Wade. I'm the one that killed abortion rights. I'm the one that killed women's opportunity to make their own choice. I, he took credit so many times, and they've got him on, on tape. That's going to be running. In, in ads before the election. Absolutely. He's going to try to muddy the differences there between the Democratic position and his. But the opportunity to brand Mike Johnson as a poster boy for a national abortion right. ban is there. They need to grab it. They need to move fast. This is not only important for President Biden and the swing states with independent suburban women, but it's really important for taking back the House. You've got those five swing districts in New York. Uh, obviously, overturning Roe v. Wade did not change abortion law in New York State. Right. A national abortion ban would. Abortions are actually up nationally. And that's because women have figured out they got to get to states if they're going to have that choice that allow them. And a national abortion ban would take that away. So this is a galvanizing issue in red and blue states alike. So, Molly, so little was known about Mike Johnson before his ascension to speakership that Senator Susan Collins of Maine told reporters she had to Google him to figure out who he was and what he stood for. We're learning more by the day. And, yes, there seems like there's political opportunity here next November for Democrats. But between now and then, that's a long year. Talk to us about some things you worry about what a speaker, this speakership could mean. It could mean, well, I think that the ultimate goal here is to shut down the government. I mean, these guys are nihilists. This is part of the burn it down party. I mean, he's much more religious than the MAGA Republicans, maybe. But ultimately, he is aligned with that same thing. So I worry about Ukraine aid. I worry about Israel aid. I mean, how does this government work if you if it's led by someone who, A, doesn't really know the rules and B, doesn't really want it to work? Yeah, Vanity Fair's Molly Jong Fast and Newsweek's Tom Rogers. Thank you both very much to bring yeah, that was analysis. trick or treating last night. <laughs> with grandkids. Uh, well, the grandkids were uh, extremely successful, uh, but uh, ended up giving away their own candy oh, when uh, when nice. my daughter ran out, and it was a real selfless act on the part of a two and a half year old. Molly, did your children give away their candy? I, my kids are too old for yeah. Trick or okay, treating, mine too. Yeah. All right.